Hey Ninja Warriors, I hope that you all have seen the title. So today we are going to talk about J Advance 2024. But before I start talking about the mathematics part, before I start talking about the J Advance exactly, let me just clear this doubt that most of you must be having this doubt that ma'am, am I even eligible for J Advance? Right? Because if I'm not eligible, then this video is not for me. Right, so am I even eligible for J Advance? Every one of you, I, I guess most of you must be thinking that will I be able to clear the cutoff and more importantly, what would be the cutoff uh, of J Advance 2024 specifically, right? So before I start, I will just uh, show you 2023 data and we will conclude that whether on what percentile you will clear that cutoff and you will be eligible for J Advance, right? Okay, but yes, before I start, please let me know in the chat box whether I'm audible and visible. Just give me a green signal so that we can uh, start. Okay, I can see comments pouring in. Vinakolu, hi Deepak, uh, Hasini, hello, hello, welcome, welcome to the session. And uh, quickly like this session, right, and share this session with uh, your fellow J aspirants especially who are focusing on J advance. Okay. So let us get into the details. Now let us talk about whether you are eligible for J advance. Like how do I know whether I should prepare for J advance or not, or I should go for some other examination, right? Okay. So can you clearly see, let us have a look at 2023 J advance data. Let that what all students have got like uh, cleared the cutoff. So clearly you can see that for open category, that is for general category in 2023, the percentile, the cutoff percentile was 90 percentile, right? So if you're getting somewhere around 90 percentile and if you're from general category, then you can go and give it a shot to J advance. Okay. All right. And plus minus one, two. So if you're, even if you're getting 89, 88 percentile, I would say you can give it a, a shot to the J advance examination. If you have prepared for J advanced examination, then you should definitely give it a shot. And in few in a few days, you know that result will be there, cutoff will be there. So you'll be knowing that, okay, am I eligible or not? But I have given you rough idea about the cutoff percentile, right, for J advanced. And it, the similar thing will gonna happen in 2024, right? Not much difference. That's what we hope and that's what we expect, okay? All right, I can see Hame Rithan is saying around 93 percentile. So if you're serious about J advance, if you're serious, serious about getting into the IIT and uh, so if you feel so, then you, then you can just clearly give it a shot for J advance, okay? That is my thing. But, but, but here is the catch. Again, again. So some people will think, okay, even if I am clearing the cutoff, will I be able to crack J advance? Because J advance is ma'am very difficult examination, we all know. So even if I am scoring 90 plus, suppose I am scoring 94 percentile, 95 percentile, so will I be able to crack J advance? So for that, we need to understand how to crack. Like what is like what is the criteria to crack J advance? Let's understand this examination. Let's understand the pattern. Let's understand the minimum marks to get uh, minimum marks to enter into any IIT because J advance is specifically for IIT J uh, IIT colleges. Unlike J main, because pro through J main you can get any college, various colleges, right? NITs as well. But J uh, J advance exam is very specific exam, and we have to invest our very precious time in that examination. So we need to understand. We need to have that mindset. Okay, is this exam for me or not? Because we don't have a an year. We have only forty to forty five days remaining, right? If I'm not wrong. Okay. So minimum marks to enter into a IIT. So first of all, these are the, not the minimum marks. I'm going to tell you what are the minimum marks. But can you see this is the data from 2023 and IIT Delhi. So minimum marks to enter into IIT Delhi college was 141. By the way, the marks were from 360. And from uh, if I talk about IIT Roorkee, so minimum marks to enter into IIT Roorkee out of 360 was 131. And so on, can you see? IIT KGP out of 360 triple one, one marks were there to enter into IIT KGP. These are the top eight colleges approximately, but there are more colleges as well like IIT Goa, IIT BHU. So I will write minimum marks for from 2023 to enter 
approximately 105 marks out of 360 if you score then you can get into any iit right like like bottoms iit as well like iit goa or the iits which are not in the top 8 list okay there are so many iits right so yes 105 if you're getting this this is a safe score for 2023 right for for 2023 so 105 out of 360 can you see the score the score is actually not even 50 percent right less than 50 percent can you see all right yes 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 so these are the marks that you minimum marks you need to get uh, to score uh, to get into iit right now 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 okay so this problem most of student most of the students faces especially Topper student also faces this particular thing that ma'am, okay, physics and mathematics, my physics and mathematics is strong, but I'm not good at chemistry. And you know what, you, you don't have to score full marks. You don't even have to score 60-70% in your uh, uh, J examination. I'm talking about the advanced examination. So can I just leave one chapter, leave one subject, leave one subject. Chemistry I will leave and I will score alone with the help of physics and mathematics. Can I do that? But unlike J main, we have a sectional cutoff or you can say subject wise cutoff as well. So we should be aware about this, right? About the subject wise cutoff, right? Because majority of the time it happens, I have not seen uh, a single student in my 10 year uh, teaching career that, okay, ma'am, mathematics, solid, physics, solid and chemistry, super solid. No, all three subjects of single student cannot be very, very uh, good, right? So one subject is there, suppose uh, a student is having mathematics on a lower side, but strongest subject is physics and chemistry. So combination, right? So sectional cutoff, let us see what is the sectional cutoff for 2023. So we are referring uh, to 2023 data. So can you see minimum marks in each subject to clear J advance, right? So uh, there can be a case that if you are getting, for example, full marks in physics, suppose hypothetically full marks in physics, full marks in chemistry, but in mathematics, even if you are scoring seven marks, if you are from general category, no, 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 J advance is not clear. Okay. Right. Yes. So that's why for each subject, at least eight marks, you should get eight, eight, eight each minimum marks. And Overall, the minimum aggregate marks, 86 marks, this is the data for from 2023, 86 marks means total marks from P, C, M, P plus C plus M should be 86, then you are eligible, then you are like uh, eligible for counseling sessions, okay? All right, so these are the marks from J advanced, J advanced marks, minimum marks in each subject in J advanced, right? In J main, there is no sectional cutoff, okay? And for category, you can just watch out. Okay, so this is actually doable. Two questions, two, three questions. If you do, you are safe. So even if you feel that, okay, ma'am, my this chemistry is not that strong, for example. So please understand that you have to do at least two to three correct questions, two questions at least correct, so that you clear that sectional cutoff, right? Okay, all right. Now, now you have all you all must be preparing majority of you must be preparing and focusing on j mains since past two years yes or no you are doing that we are also in that mode teachers are also in that mode that first let's focus on j mains once a student gets more than 94 95 percentile at least he clears the cutoff for j advance then we will talk about j advance right because talking about j advance before j main before clearing J main is not at all a good thing, okay? So, but there is a clear-cut mindset difference between J mains and advance, yes. Clear-cut mindset difference, paper difference, uh, the, although the, the, the syllabus is similar, almost similar, the concepts are similar, but the paper pattern and the mindset is absolutely different, okay? So, in J mains, you focus upon speed and accuracy, speed, speed is there. But in J advance, you focus only on those topics which are your strength and you spend some good time, four to five minutes to solve one whole matrix match question, maybe numerical, may, maybe multi-select question. So the pattern is different. Let us understand the J advance pattern. We need to switch that mode. We need to switch uh, things because it can happen that uh, some of you might be good in speed, but it may happen that 
ओके स्पीड इज नॉट योर स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट पॉइंट बट यू आर समन हु कैन स्पेंड फोर टू फाइव मिनट सॉल्व अ क्वेश्चन नाइसली गिव सम गुड टाइम एंड देन गेट द करेक्ट आंसर सो दो टाइप ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स डू एक्सट्रीमली वेल इन जे एडवांस ऑल दो दे मे और मे नॉट डू गुड इन जे मीन्स बिकॉज दिस इज ओनली अबाउट स्पीड राइट ओके सो लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द पेपर पैटर्न नाउ सो यू ऑल नो आई नो दैट मोस्ट ऑफ यू नो अबाउट द पेपर पैटर्न लेट बट I will give you a few minutes to understand this. So two papers are there in J Advance. Paper one clearly two compulsory paper. Paper one and paper two, right? Paper one and paper two total time duration three hours for each paper. Okay, three hours for each paper for this category. They have uh, allotted four hours for each paper, but general category and other categories three hours for each paper. So total six hours, right? They give break in between and also. Paper one will have three sections PCM. Paper two will also have three sections. But marking screen is something which is very different. Let us understand. So this is from twenty twenty three. So paper ah uh, paper pattern changes every year a little bit. Okay, but recent twenty twenty three paper pattern. Let's understand. So paper number one was pretty simple. The paper pattern was pretty simple. MCQ was single correct option, just like your J main paper. So six questions were there and eighteen marks were there. Okay, section two single correct option. So single correct option again, why sing, same thing single correct. Okay, and uh, yes, six questions were there, but marking were little different. Okay, so these were six threes are eighteen, six fours are twenty four. So three marker, four marker. Numerical value just like your J main examination six question four marks twenty four. So this was the paper. Paper one was quite similar to your J main, but paper pattern I am talking about, not the difficulty level. Okay, now what about this? Paper number two is something which is very different. MCQ with one or more than one correct answer. So over here, what happens is this is the thing where student are not that well versed. They have not prepared. They are not prepared about this particular questions. Why? Because single correct we are doing from for J mains as well. So we are confident in this. But when this, uh, uh, when these type of question, uh, J advance ask MCQs with one or more than one correct answer, so there are chances majority of the student uh, do not perform well in this type of question paper. And numerical answer is same again six four zero twenty four and single digit integer answer again same thing just like uh, numerical type. But over here the answer will be predictable between these ten values. Okay, all right. So this this is the paper number two. All right. Now let us talk about the mathematics part. Okay, you must be waiting for the mathematics part, so you can clearly see the weightage over here. So please uh, ignore this. This is weightage. Yes, weightage. Unit wise weightage, you can clearly see over here. So yes, first of all, can you see the maximum? This is based on past five years analysis. So from past five years, algebra is coming thirty six percent. Okay, and also let me tell you that uh, this pattern changes very often every year. But since quite a uh, two to three years, the pattern is almost similar. But sometimes they give some surprises. But more or less same matrix, matrix match, assertion, reason. These type of questions they give. Okay, all right now. Algebra thirty six percent. You can clearly see calculus twenty seven approximately. Trigonometry they give thirteen percent. Vector and three D twelve percent. Coordinate geometry ten point three percent. Okay, so this is your weightage. You can clearly see unit wise weightage. Now, unit wise. Now chapter wise, I have divided the priority list. So I will show you the priority. So these are the high weightage topics. Vector and three D geometry is high weightage. Although you will see that okay, ma'am, only twelve percent. You are saying algebra is thirty six percent. So out of these two, algebra is high weightage. Now why are you saying that this is high weightage? Why? Because algebra is having so many chapters. Only vector and three D is carrying twelve percent. Can you see this is actually a high weightage? Algebra is having so many chapters. You know matrices and determinant is there in algebra. Binomial theorem, quadratic, complex numbers, everything. Right? P and C, probability. Right? So that's why. Vector and 3D geometry. So these are the chapter-wise high weighted. So you can decide your priority based on your strong points. Remember, you don't have to like go all in all. You don't have to uh, think about how to cover the complete syllabus. But rather, you should focus on one topic and one chapter and study in depth so that you can actually 
spend some good two three minutes four minutes in one question and do that question correctly okay so in this in j main syllabus completion was the key but in here j advanced syllabus completion is not the key the depth of understanding is very very important right so understanding of the chapter whole chapter in in depth is very important so please select your chapters wisely smartly okay so vector and 3d geometry i would say everybody should uh, give it a try and study this in depth i know for j main we have studied each and everything now is the time that you should dig deeper in vector and 3d geometry now trigonometry trigonometry means itf plus solution of triangles plus trigonometry basic that, that compound angles right so all the trig all the things related to trigonometry will be here so this is the ag again high weighted chapter because can you see trigonometry 13% alone from trigonometry right and then probability conics matrices and determinants so can you see these two topics actually were there were high weighted in your jm in as well vector and 3d and matrices and determinants and aod is also high weighted chapter so these are the high weighted chapters okay so you can just make note of it now medium weighted chapter chapter integration indefinite plus definite both indefinite plus definite integration complex numbers lcd sequence and series again this is actually a doable question doable chapter but again in sequence and series what happens this is one of the chapters wherein if you are getting the answer it is very easy but if you are not getting the answer the sequence and series they give the toughest question from sequence and series i am not trying to scare you but sometimes they give so it is better that you do this chapter but keep that in mind if if that question is not for you just leave it right but this is again i would say a doable chapter okay sequence and series pnc and circles this these are the medium weighted chapters okay all right now low weightage differential equation is low weightage right area under curve is again low weightage but you know what the chapter is actually extremely small area under curve right not many concepts are there is just about plotting of the curve if you know plotting of the curve nicely then area under curve is absolutely killable okay functions quadratic and binomial these are the low weightage again but binomial theorem is low effort as well right so binomial theorem is low weightage but low effort so even so low weightage doesn't mean that you are not getting any question you will get a question right so yes that's how you can do it now i know that most of you must be thinking ma'am talk about the sessions which you are going to take on youtube right we need some crash course or something so yes we are going to take academic sessions for j advance but 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 it absolutely depends on you so what you need to do is you need to write your uh, target or your dream college in the comment section and if your dream college is iit bombay please go ahead, ahead and write if your dream college is iit delhi go ahead and write if your dream college is iit hyderabad go ahead even if your dream college is iit dhanbad please hashtag iit guwahati or any college iit mandi there are so many iits right iit indore i am from indore hashtag iit indore you can write so whatever is your dream college please write in the comment section so and like the session a lot so that we will launch j advance academic sessions based on the a response on this particular video if we are getting a very good response then we will definitely launch we will understand that okay on this channel there are students who are serious about je advance examination so we will actually uh, launch some very good series for, for je advance okay all right okay so i guess that's about it all right that, that's about the video okay uh yeah so this is me namrata signing off i'll see you all super soon in j advance or upcoming exams video